Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to those who have joined the his master class. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem amma ba'd. As a recap to the last lesson, we discussed uh, two main principles and two rules. The first rule is that if a spotting, if the blood exceeds 10 days, then you have to look at the place of habit. If uh, there is a nisab of three days or more, then all the bloods in the place of habit will be counted as hayes and the rest will be counted as istihada. At times, you will notice a difference if the number changes in the place of habit and at times, you will not notice any difference if the number remains the same. We looked at several examples uh, to illustrate uh, when a difference is seen. At times, uh, uh, although the rule applies, you do not notice any difference because the number remains the same. And at times, you see a difference when the number changes or the number reduces. Uh, the second rule uh, we looked at is that if the blood exceeds 10 days, and there is no nisab uh, in the place of habit. In other words, uh, there is no blood whatsoever in the place of habit, or there are bloods, but it is not uh, equal to the nisab. It is not three days or more. It is, for instance, two days or one day of blood in the place of habit. In that case, you will not consider the place of habit. You will count it from the first spotting. Whatever was seen on the first spotting, uh, you will count the haze from that day and from that point onwards. Uh, these are the two rules we discussed uh, in the last session. In other words, we discussed uh, when the blood exceeds uh, 10 days and whether or not there is a nisab in the place of habit. Today we'll be discussing the third rule. If the blood does not exceed 10 days, which is followed by a valid tuhar, all the blood during the period will be hayz, otherwise uh, a woman will revert to her previous habit. So far we discuss when the blood uh, or the bloods exceed 10 days. Now we are discussing when the blood uh, or the bloods do not exceed 10 days. If it does not exceed 10 days, you will count it from the first spotting. If it exceeds 10 days, as is the general rule, uh, you will revert to your previous habit. This is the case where there is no place of habit. So when there is no place of habit and the blood doesn't exceed 10 days, you will count it from the first spotting. If it exceeds 10 days, uh, you will revert to your previous habit. Let's look at a few examples. A habitual woman spots from day one to day five at the beginning of the month. In the following month, she spots six days at the beginning of the month from day one to day six. Then she is clean till day 14. Then she spots on day 15 before a full 15 days has passed. Let's look at the calendar. The first calendar, she spots on day one, two, three, four, and five. That is a habit. Then she is clean for 25 days the rest of the month. In the following month, day 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, she spots just as the previous month. However, in this month, she spots on day 6. So when she spots on day 6, automatically you know it is counted as haze. Why? Because uh, it is valid blood. In other words, it is uh, a blood that has occurred more than three days and less than uh, 10 days. In other words, between this period. So you'll count it as valid blood and you will understand that her haze habit has changed from five to six days. So this is the case where the blood has not exceeded 10 days. However, if it exceeds 10 days, what happens? She reverts to her previous habit. So now we have to look and we have to wait uh, for the 15-day period. In other words, up till 15 days uh, to check if she spots any bloods. So uh, on the sixth day, we'll uh, understand and count it as haze. However, this can change. When will this change? This will change if she spots uh, 
before a full 15 days has passed. In other words, uh, in a Tuhrenaqis period, when she spots within a Tuhrenaqis period uh, up till day 15, then uh, it will be considered as if she bled and spotted continuously from day one right up till day 15 before a full 15 days has passed. And the rule is, if that is the case, in other words, if uh, the spotting uh, exceeds 10 days, what do you do? You revert to your previous habit. So uh, we would have considered her habit change to 16 days, but because now it's considered a continuous flow of blood over 10 days, she has to revert to her previous habit. In this case, nothing has actually changed. The number remains the same. The place of the habit remains the same. The result is the entire period is counted as one continuous flow of blood as it is a deficient purity, tuhre naqis. So remember the tuhre naqis is counted from the first spotting right up till day 15. It is not counted, uh, let's say, from day 11 onwards uh, for another 15 days. This tuhre naqis period is counted from the first spotting right till uh, before a full 15 days has passed. So in this case, day 1 to day 5, is haze, remains haze. Day 6 is istihada. However, if there was no spotting on day 15, uh, day 1 to day 6 will be haze. So you see this one spotting before the full 15 days has passed has changed everything around. So this tuhne naqis is a very important role. This deficient purity uh, is a very important role because it can change uh, uh, the whole uh, view of haze. So if a woman doesn't understand the, the law of Tuhre Naqis and deficient purity, she'll say, no, my haze habit has changed uh, to six days, whereas it's actually five days and she will be, uh, she won't perform uh, those salahs uh, that she has to repeat on day six. She will say, no, it was a day of haze, there's nothing to do. Whereas retrospectively, uh, if she didn't perform salahs on that day six, she will have to uh, repeat and make qaza of those salahs. Let's look at this example in terms of numbers. So her habit is 25 days to her, 25T. Then she spots for five days at the beginning of the month, 5B. Then she is clean for the rest of the month, uh, 25T. And then in the following month, when you consider that spotting before a full 15 days has passed, uh, it is a continuous flow of blood and it is counted as 14 days of blood, 14B. So now when you got blood in excess of 10 days here, you've got a problem. You have to now look at several things. What's the first thing you have to look at? Let's see if anyone can uh, give an answer in the chat. What's the first thing you look at when it exceeds 10 days? Anyone? So the, fir the first thing you look at, the sister states, has the nisab been made? If the previous to her was valid, fulfilled take the last habit so the first rule the first rule is when number one when it exceeds 10 days you have to look at uh if there is a place of habit right number one number two if there is a place of habit is there a nisab of three days or more in the place of habit if there is then you'll count whatever is in the place of habit as hayz and the rest as, of, as istihada. On the other hand, if there's no place of habit, uh, or there is a place of habit, but there's no nisab in the place of habit, what do you do? You count from the first spotting. That's the first uh, two rules we discussed in the last lesson and we recap now. So that is what you have to do here. The other one is check the makan. Yes, that's the first thing you do. You see, when you have excess blood and it's exceeding the 10-day uh, uh, rule, then it's an abnormal situation. In an abnormal situation, you have to follow a normal situation. So that is why the first thing we do is we go to the place of habit and we see 
uh, if there is a nisab there or not. And then we decide from there onwards. If there is a nisab, well and good, that is hayz, the rest is istihada. If there isn't a nisab, we say, okay, count from the first spotting. That's the first thing you have to do before you even determine uh, the tuhar habit. In other words, determining whether the tuhar habit has changed or not. So here the standard tuhar habit is 25 days. Then you've got five uh, uh, days of bloods. Then you've got 25 days of tuhar. So obviously there's no real, there's not going to be any real change here. Uh, however, we still have to apply the rule. So if uh, we look at the place of habit. So the easiest, the easiest way to determine the place of habit in terms of numbers is that you know, after every 25 days is the place of habit. So here, immediately after day 25 uh, of this calculation, you know it's the place of habit. And then you count 14 days thereafter, then you know from the place of habit onwards, the blood uh, is in excess. So definitely in terms of numbers, you can see that uh, day 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30 is actually the place of habit. You've got a nisab there. You count all of that as hayz and the rest of isti as istihada. Uh, after day 5, or in terms of looking at the tuhar number, you say after 30 days from the last bloods, uh, you will count the rest as istihada. So the first... Uh, five days in the place of habit or you could say day 26, 20, 27, 28, 29, 30 from the last bloods that will be hayz and the rest will be istihada. So looking at the tuhar of 25 it has appeared between two valid bloods the last was 5b and now again it's going to be 5b from after 5b onwards that will be istihada. So what's the result? 5b and 25t 5b and 25t so Although we've applied the rule, nothing has actually changed. Why? Because the number uh, remains the same. The number remains the same in terms of 5b. Right? Rule 4. Now, we're just looking at uh, rule 4 and 5 to spell out uh, some understanding. Otherwise, you've understood uh, the rules of Hay so far. If the blood does not exceed 10 days, which is followed by a valid tuhar, and the habitual number is different to the previous number uh, of hayes, the second habitual number of hayes will be a new habitual number of hayes. In other words, when you've got a situation where the blood hasn't exceeded 10 days, when it doesn't exceed 10 days, you don't look at uh, makan, you don't look at the place of habit, you don't look at... Uh, uh, nisab of three days or more etc you don't look at, the, at that at all you count from the first spotting onwards and at times the number uh, may be equal to the last uh, time and at times it may change so that's a simple uh, rule and understanding if the blood does rule five if the blood does not exceed 10 days which is followed by a valid tohar and the habitual number is the same as the previous habitual number of hayes. Nothing changes. So it's the same thing. It's just uh, making it more clearer to you. Sometimes it will be the same. And sometimes it will change depending on the number increasing or decreasing. Question from the sister. Assalamu alaikum Muftizab. In the basic hayes kitabs, we do not learn about tohre naqis. So in the above example, we would have considered the day 6 as hayes. In day 15 as uh, istihada. How do you explain to students the difference between what we learned before uh, and this rule? Because we will have to recalculate everything. Basically, we learned that anything after the 10 days during uh, the minimum 15 uh, clean days is considered istihada. Gee, this uh, rule of Tuhrenaqis, it appears in the major fiqh uh, kitabs. However, many do not give it importance. Many uh, do not understand it properly. And besides that, the many of the major fiqh books as well do not discuss uh, the makan and the place of habit. Uh, whereas if you look at Birgavi and Shami, uh, they highlight this point that many uh, you know, you may refer to them as seniors, you may refer to them as learned scholars, etc. Many of them uh, are not aware of the place of habit rule, 
But as it is one of the most important of or the most important rule uh, in regards to Hayes. If you do not consider place of habit, your calculations uh, can go upside down. Now, uh, look, you cannot go back now and recalculate everything. It's not going to be possible. Uh, if that is what you learned, uh, then uh, that may not have been the most uh, strongest of views, uh, the most authentic of views. Uh, going forward, now that you are aware of the place of habit, this is something that you will have to consider and have to explain to uh, the students. I mean, you've explained to them the 3, 10, and basic 15 rule of Tuhar. You have to now introduce the Tuhar and Aqis, which is an overarching rule when it comes to uh, the days of Hayes. It's an overarching rule. So going forward, I mean, this is the change you can make. So this is the change you should make and explain to them properly uh, and clearly this is how it is calculated. So this, I mean, you, you explain to them in the basic books. This will be an advanced explanation uh, of Tuhre Naqis and this rule of uh, deficient purity. Right? Moving on to some other examples. Now, okay, another question retrospectively. Does Qaza have to be made for any Salahs and fasts that were probably uh, invalid? if one has records of the past. So look, you will, whatever you have available in front of you, that is what you can work on and calculate on. So if you can calculate, let's say you uh, incorrectly calculated it the last month and the previous month or three months before and you have records of it, you will act upon whatever is in front of you and correct whatever is in front of you. So if you determine that on certain days, Qaza of Salah was supposed to be made, or on certain days, Qaza of Fas was supposed to be made. Now that you've learned uh, the strongest of opinions and the most authentic of opinions, uh, you need to correct what was incorrect uh, accordingly. So if you have records, Alhamdulillah, you can work towards it. If you don't, then there's nothing to work on and there's nothing to calculate on. One must make Tawbah, Istighfar, and work on uh, the way forward. So one of the most important, uh, so all the examples that I am presenting to you is not examples that I have created. Uh, every example that has been presented to you during this uh, Hayes Masterclass, they are all examples that Birgavi has put forward and perhaps he did not uh, paint out each example clearly. However, Shami, Shami in his commentary, he has painted out every example to highlight each rule to us. So every example that is being presented to you is being presented like Shami presented it or like Birgavi uh, spoke about it or discussed it to highlight all these rules. So we are going to go through a number of examples uh, so that uh, we fully understand the rules of Hayes. So this is an example where there's no nisab in the place of habit. A habitual woman spots for five days and is clean for 55 days. In the following month, she spots for five days in the place of habit. Then she is clean for 15 days. Then she spots for 11 days. Let's look at the calendar. The first calendar, right? Day one, two, three, four, five. She spots there. That's the place of habit. Now, if you look at the second calendar, there is no spotting there but there's a spotting on the third calendar. In other words, this woman has a habit of spotting uh, every alternate month. So she spots on one month, she doesn't spot on the next month, and then on the following month she spots. So this happens at times. So she spots five days, then she's clean for 55 days. She doesn't see anything uh, on the next month. But on the third month, she spots day one, two, three, four, five again, same number, same place of habit. No issues there. So at that point in time, she's uh, going to understand, you know, there's no problem here. It's just like the last time. But then after 15 days, after 15 days, she starts spotting. In other words, this is a case of early bloods. She doesn't, this is not normally the case, but this has happened. So she spots one, two, three, four, five on the calendar. Day 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. And then she carries on spotting now. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30 on the calendar. 
in other words, she spots six more days. Now, again, coming to the rule of the Tuhrenaqis, the deficient purity, right? Now, remember, the first thing you see here is there's a 15-day gap uh, from the uh, first spotting from day 1 to day 5 to the second spotting from day 21 to day 25. There is a 15-day gap here. Now, what do you refer this as? What's, what's the term for this? Let's see if anyone can give an answer. What, what do we refer to this as? This is obvious. I'll give you a clue. This is obviously a tuhar, but what type of tuhar is this? Is this a tuhar sahih? Is this a uh, tuhar fasid? Is this a tuhar tam? Is this a tuhar naqis? Are we talking about the days between the first bloods and the second bloods? So, this, this period here is actually a tuhar sahih. But the more correct term to use here is a tuhretam. It's a tuhretam. When you've got a 15-day gap in between the first thing, you see, okay, listen, this is a tuhretam. Then you look at it, uh, whether it is a tuhre sahih or whether it is tuhre fasid. A tuhre sahih is where there's no bloods in between that 15 days. So yes, it's a tuhre sahih. It's not a tuhre fasid. So when you've got a tuhretam, right, of 15 days, uh, and then you get early bloods, remember... Uh, after a tohretam, it is possible to count another haze. It is possible to count another haze. Uh, the issue comes about when uh, it exceeds 10 days. And then you look at Makan and see whether there is a Nisab there or not. So here, uh, from the first spotting till the last spotting, the blood has definitely exceeded 10 days. So when we uh, look for a Makan, there is no Makan here. Because it's way early. It's in the first month. She only spots every alternate month. So there's no nisab, uh, there's no makan to look at and there's no nisab to look at. So what's the rule? You count from the first spotting, right? When you count from the first spotting, we said that she will count everything uh, as, as bloods, as haze, unless it exceeds 10 days. So here it has exceeded 10 days and the rule is when it exceeds 10 days, then you follow your last habit. Then the last habit was five days. So you'll count uh, the spotting from the first uh, day, that is from day 21, uh, 22, 23, 24, and 25. You'll count those first five days uh, as haze and the rest from day 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And then after 31 or the next month, you'll count that as istihada. So effectively, what has happened? Effectively, uh, her number in terms of haze hasn't changed. However, the place of a habit has now changed. The place of a habit has now changed and now she's experiencing uh, two haze in a month uh, after a tuhre tam or after a tuhre sahih of 15 days. Let's look at the result. The blood has exceeded 10 days and there is no nisab of a minimum of three days in the place of habit as it appeared before a 55 days to her has passed since the last haze. The blood will be counted from the first spotting as it appeared after a complete purity a tuhretam of 15 days. As it exceeds 10 days, she reverts to her previous habit. Uh, therefore, her haze habit of 5 days remains the same. However, the blood after the tuhar of 15 days from day 16, um, from day 16 to day 20 uh, is her new place of habit. All right? So day 16 is obviously after day 15 of a tuhar, but if you look at the calendar in terms of uh, the number there, it is going to be from day 21 onwards. Either way, you can look at it and understand the rule. Let's look at it in terms of numbers. A habit is 55 days tuhar, then she spots 5 days bloods, then she is clean for 55 days, a 55 day tuhar, and then she spots for 5 days 5b, and uh, on the last month, she is then clean for 15 days, a 15-day tohar period. And then she spots for 11 days in total. All right? So when you've got an uh, uh, 11B situation, it's a case of an invalid blood. When you've got uh, blood in excess of 10 days, again, the first rule is you look at 
the place of habit or you look at the makar and then you see if there is a nisab there or not so clearly here uh, it is way before uh, the place of habit way before the makan so there is no way to even actually look at a nisab another way to look at it is that you know after every 55 days uh, she spots right you, you take day, you take the number 15 if you got a calculator in front of you you take the number 15 and then you add number 11 that gives you 26 days so she, it is only possible to actually look at a habit after 55 days this is no way close to that so therefore you'll ignore makan place of habit uh, you'll ignore a uh, nisab etc and then you will count it uh, from the start provided that of course there's a valid uh, uh, tuhar uh, before that of at least a minimum of 15 days if you've got that you'll count it from the first spotting and obviously here is it, yeah, the, the blood has exceeded 10 days what's the rule you revert to your previous habit previous habit is five days first five days of the blood's counted as haste the rest as istihada the other question arises what's the tuhar has it changed from 55 to 15 the answer is yes why because it has appeared between two valid bloods between 5b and between the other 5b at the start of 11b so at the at the start of 11b you got valid bloods so the tuhar has changed from 15 55 to 15 the result is a haze is five days and the tuhar is 15 days It is very common for young girls or even ladies when they're breastfeeding, etc., where they don't get a period for them uh, not to bleed for a few months. So they told her period is very long. Have had cases where they didn't bleed for a year and all uh, would be a valid to her as there is no maximum to her period. Just say she has a valid to her habit of uh, 200 days. In the case where she bleeds over 10 days or has less than 15 clear days clean, she would have to revert to her haze previous habit. Normally, we would have just counted 15 clean days thereafter to count any further blood. Now, we are being taught to also count her previous to her habit. So, if her previous haze habit was 8 days and her to her habit was 200 days, does that mean she will take eight days as her habit and then wait 200 days until she starts counting any further bleeding as haze, even if she bleeds a proper red flow multiple times uh, in that 200-day period? It will all be istihada, meaning she can enter a masjid, have intercourse, etc., as it will all be technically classified as istihada. Even if it is a valid tuhar of one year, which you have to wait for one year to pass to count any further bleeding as haze. Normally, we would have just counted 15 days and thereafter all other bleeding would have been haze. Would that be a better option for this lady to consider in a case instead of taking her previous to her habit as she is getting proper red haze multiple times? Okay. Now, I uh, alluded to this in the beginning. Remember, the to her habit is used as a guide uh, to establish the place of habit when there is blood in excess of 10 days, right? The tohar habit is used as a guide uh, to establish the makan, the place of habit, when there is blood in excess of 10 days. It does not mean that you can only count a haze after a valid uh, uh, to her period uh, regardless of its length of time no once you've got a tohre tam whether the tohre tam is uh, sahih or fasid you've got 15 days uh, uh, from the last haze whether or not blood appeared in those 15 days makes no difference once you've got a tohre tam of 15 days from the last haze it is possible to count the next haze uh, provided that there's valid bloods of three days or more or 10 days or less. You do not, if, if a woman had uh, a previous to her habit of 200 days, like in this example, she is not going to wait 200 days in order to count the next haze. If now uh, 
after let's say uh, 50 days she starts spotting what's the rule the rule is uh, obviously if it's valid blood three days or more 10 days or less we will count it as haze uh, from the first spotting now the rule of you know if it exceeds 10 days uh, etc then you look at the place of habit that rule is in its place and obviously uh, because it's way before 200 days you're not going to have a place of habit so like we just discussed now you'll count it from the first spotting you'll count everything from the first spotting as haze as long as it's uh, under 10 days if it exceeds 10 days then she'll revert to her previous habit so this shows you again the to her habit, regardless of its length of time, it's just used uh, as a guide to establish the makan and place of habit when you've got blood in excess of 10 days. Okay, so we're looking at uh, this example in terms of numbers. We did that example. We're looking at a second example now. A habitual woman spots for five days and is clean for 55 days. In the following month, she spots for five days in the place of habit. Then she is clean for 46 days. Then she spots for 11 days. Right? So similar to the previous one with slight differences. So five, uh, five at the start of the month and then she's usually clean for 55 days. But now she is actually clean for 46 days. So we looked at uh, numbers before. When you've got a decrease of a tohar, then it means... Uh, you potentially have uh, a, a, a haze place of habit changing, right? So, 46 days she's clean, then she starts spotting again. How many days she spots? She spots for 11 days. So, like you see here, again, what we're doing? We're using uh, the tohar habit as a guide uh, to establish haze, right? So, first thing, when you've got excess blood, what's the rule? Look at the makan. Right, so the makan and the place of habit is actually on the third month on the calendar. So we're looking at the third calendar here, right? So total bloods from the first spotting 11 days in, in excess of 10 days. Looking at the makan now, how many days of bloods we got there? Day one and day two, right? So now we have to establish is there nisab here or not? Nisab has to be a minimum of three days or more. There's definitely no nisab here. What's the rule? The rule now is we count from the first bloods we count everything from the first bloods right uh, so when we count from the first bloods and you've got uh, blood in excess of 10 days what do you do you revert to your previous habit in terms of number so you'll count from uh, the first bloods day 22 23 24 25 and 26 of the previous calendar as haze and the rest as istihada so you see, even though her previous valid to her uh, was how many days? Was 55 days. We're not, we're not looking at that anymore. That was used as a guide to establish a uh, place of habit and whether there is a nisab there or not. Otherwise, it can change very quickly like it has changed here. So uh, just keep that in mind. Do not uh, think that, that uh, the lengthy period of to her is a must. It has to be followed in every instance. No, that's not the case. It is used as a guide to establish a uh, uh, makan place of habit uh, and if there is a nisab there or not when you have blood in excess of 10 days. If there is no nisab, uh, there's no makan uh, there, there is no nisab there, no place of habit, no three days or more, you're going to totally ignore that and follow the other rule and start counting from the first blood. When it exceeds 10 days, like in this case, you will count, uh, 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 you will follow the previous habit and count only those days at the start of the spotting. So in this case, what has happened? The number has remained the same, but the place of habit has changed. From where it has changed, it has changed from the start of the third month to now close to the end of the second month. Number remains the same, place of, place of habit has changed. So the result is the blood has exceeded 10 days and there is no nisab of a minimum of 3 days in the place of habit. Only 2 days spotting in the place of habit. The blood will be counted from the first spotting as it appeared after a complete purity to her etam, uh, more than 15 days. The other thing to keep in mind here is that we're not following the 55 day rule strictly. As long as we've got a to her etam 
or 15 days or more uh, since the last spotting of Hayes. Whether that Tuhre Tam is Sahih or Fasid, valid or invalid, doesn't make a difference. As long as we got a 15 day gap, we can now count the next one, provided there's uh, no blood in excess of 10 days, uh, there's no place of habit, uh, and there is no Nisab of three days or more. Once we've, we've, we've ticked these boxes, then we count it, uh, regardless of the length of the uh, previous Tuhre uh, Sahih or valid purity. As it exceeds 10 days, she reverts to her previous habit. Therefore, her haze habit of 5 days remains the same. However, the blood after the tuhar of 46 days from day 47 uh, of the tuhar to day 51 uh, is her new place of habit. Number remains the same. Place of habit has changed. Let's look at it in terms of numbers. 55T, 5B, 46T and 11B. Right? Whenever we've got an 11B uh, situation or anything in excess of 10, we've got a problem. So what's the first thing you do again? The first thing is you look at place of habit. Is there a place of habit or not? So again, let's look at your calculator. Take. So the first thing we do is we know after 55 days, she normally sees and that's the place of habit. But now she's got a 46 situation. So take 46 plus... 11 and that will give you 57 automatically you know she's supposed to be spotting after 55 but uh she had early bloods and now there's two days of bloods uh just by looking at these numbers she uh, the bloods go into 56 and 57 so when we're looking at place of habit you definitely got a place of habit here but the problem is there's no nisab in the place of habit it's only two days 56 and 57 so, what's the rule there? When there's no nisab, you count everything from the start. Right? You're going to count everything from the start, number one. And number two, you still got a case of blood in excess of 10 days. What's the rule there? You go to your previous habit. Previous habit was how many days? Five days. So, you'll count the spotting of the 11B from the start. Uh, the first five days as hayz and the rest of, as istihada. So, the number actually remains the same, 5B. Question is, does the Torah change from 55 to 46? So the answer to that is it changes from 55 to 46. Why? Because it has appeared, uh, it's not attached to any invalid bloods because we're counting from uh, day one of the 11B as valid bloods. And number two, obviously it appears between two valid bloods. So it has changed from 55 to 46. The result is, Albert, is 5B and 46T. Now, the, these two examples that we looked at were examples where there was no nisab in the place of habit. All right? There was no nisab in the place of habit and we counted everything from the start. This is, these are examples where there is a nisab equivalent to the habitual number of days in the place of habit. In other words, you've got a case of excess blood. Uh, you even got a nisab, but nothing actually changes because the numbers remain the same. So let's look at this example. A habitual woman spots for five days and is clean for 55 days. In the following month, she spots for five days in the place of habit. Then she is clean for 48 days. Then she spots for 12 days. Same calendar situation. She spots at the start of the first month. She is clean usually for 55 days. But on this occasion, she is clean for 48 days and then she has early bloods. So again, when you've got uh, you're looking at the previous number of 55 and you're looking at this number of 48, automatically you know there's a case of early bloods here, right? So she starts spotting uh, from day 49 onwards and she spots for how many days? 12 days, right? So what's the rule again? Look at the place of habit. Is there a place of habit here? Yes. Is there a uh, threshold? A nisab of three days or more in the place of habit? The answer is yes. So what's the rule there? You count everything within that period as hayz and the rest as istihada. So here you got 12 days in total. In other words, seven days early bloods in the second month. 
the rest five days in the following month 12 days in total you'll count everything in the third month day one two three four and five as hayes and the rest of as istihada because it fulfills our rule now so we can't actually start counting from uh, day 24 uh, on the calendar of the previous month because we got a place of habit and we got an, uh, a threshold in the place of habit so you see why and how the place of habit changes everything so what has happened here? We applied that, uh, that rule, uh, but nothing has actually changed. It has remained the same as uh, the previous uh, month where it is five days. The number has remained the same and the place of habit has remained the same. Uh, so the result is the blood has exceeded 10 days and an isab of a minimum of three days exists in the place of habit. Therefore, all the bloods in the place of habit is haze. The habitual number of hayes remains the same and the place of habit remains the same. The seven days blood in excess of habit from day 49 to day 55 of the Tuhar is istihada. A habit is 19 Tuhar and 10 days hayes. Following month period began uh, after only 10 days Tuhar. So the entire period went as istihada to follow 19 tuhar days so now for the next month is this tuhar still 19 days as this is an invalid tuhar right so look if you've got a valid tuhar uh, in this case 19 days and then you have invalid blood uh, attached to it in other words, uh, let's look at this example, right? 10 days hayes, 19 days tuhar, and 10 days hayes. That is usually the case. However, in the following month, instead of having a full clean uh, 19 uh, days, uh, she spots in between. Let's say it could be on day 16 or it could be even on day 19. So, uh nothing actually is going to show you a difference here because whilst we count this current tohar as invalid she has to revert to her previous tohar to actually establish a makan uh, and place of habit etc so it still remains 19 nothing has actually changed but let's say uh, she is uh, you know clean and then she has uh, a 20 day tohar and on day 20 she spots right so are we going to see that the tuhar has changed from 19 to 20 we're going to say no why because she had a spot of invalid blood if now we establish it's invalid blood so it hasn't actually changed to 20 she will go with the previous habit of 19. this example that we looked at on the calendar let's look at it in terms of numbers 55t 5b 48t and 12b Right? Usually you look at the last numbers to determine what's uh, the last bloods and what's the last tuhar. So here you've got a 12B situation. It has exceeded 10 days. You've got a problem. You need to look at whether there is a place of habit here or not. So take the number 48 plus 12. That gives you 60. Now we know she only spots after 55 days. So in terms of number... Uh, you've firstly you've got blood in excess of 10 days and secondly she spots usually from the last bloods to this time on day 56 57 58 59 and 60 so you definitely got a place of habit here so what do you do the rule is you count all of that in the place of habit as haze and the bloods before that as istihada so in terms of the haze number uh, uh, the number remains the same uh, because uh, you are counting all the bloods in the place of habit as hayes. So the number as the last time remains the same. The place of habit as the last time remains the same. You got an issue here. Has the 55 day tohar changed to 48 days of tohar or not? So the answer to that, it, it hasn't changed. Like we look at the previous example. In the previous example, it actually changed. Yeah, it hasn't changed. Why? Can, you, can anyone answer that? Why hasn't, if you look at the result, it says uh, it's now, f it remains 55T. 
it hasn't changed basically to 4080. Why is that? Can anyone answer that? Due to the bloods exceeding 10 days because of the 12 days. Yes, we do understand that it is a 12 day situation, but also in the previous example, we had an example of uh, 12 days where it exceeded 10 days, but there the Tuhar changed to 46 days. Here we are saying that it hasn't changed uh, to 48 days, it remains 55 days. Nisab, uh, because the 48 has uh, istihaza attached to it, Nisab falls within the bleed due to the early bloods in excess of 10 days uh, resulting in a Tuhar Fasid. Tuhar has istihaza. Nisab was in the place of habit at the end. Okay, so one or two have given the right answer here. Yeah? When you got a 12B situation, obviously you're going to need to determine the place of habit and the nisab in the place of habit. If you determine that, then you know which bloods are valid and invalid. So in this case, towards the end of the 12B, we, are, we found a place of habit and we found a threshold there. So towards the end, we counted those days as haze and the rest of as istihada. In other words, the start of the 12B is counted as istihada. So when you got that situation, you have to look at that 48T that has appeared there. That 48T is now attached to what? It's attached to istihada. It's attached to invalid blood. And we know when a tohar is attached to invalid blood, what happens? That becomes an invalid tohar. You can't use that to establish a habit. So what do you do? You go back to your previous habit, your previous valid habit stands of how many days? 55 days. There's your answer. Let's look at another example. A habitual woman spots for five days and is clean. Okay, another question. Salams. Uh, does place of habit only work for a lady that gets a haze on the same date uh, for a few months? Or if she gets a haze uh, for two months in a row on the same dates and the month after again on different dates. So we use this as a place of habit. Question is, do we always look at the month before for place of habit? It can change within few months uh, or has to be same dates for a few consecutive months. Okay, one point that must be made clear. Here. The examples that are being shown to you on the calendar is not... Uh, what you will use on a day-to-day -day basis uh, or in practical situations. You will put a calendar in front of you or you'll use an app, for instance, and you'll mark your days, etc. At the end of the day, you need to jot down the number of the days because this number can change. The way you view it on a calendar is one thing to understand a situation. And the way you view it in terms of numbers is more accurate. These examples that are shown to you is simply uh, there to highlight uh, the, the examples. However, in practical day-to-day -day calculations, you are going to take the numbers itself. Because look, the hours can change and the numbers can move around. You may look at it as one full day. It's not actually one full day. It could be half a day. So you got all the times with you. You will have to sit down, take down the numbers. Once you've got your numbers, uh, you will see from those numbers itself whether there's early blood, whether there's late blood, uh, whether there's blood in excess of 10 or not, whether there is a, 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 a place of habit or whether there's a threshold there or not. You will see that when you jot down the numbers. Just this morning, uh, I got a question from one of the senior muftis um, in South Africa. He sent me uh, the dates of the woman. The woman calculated her dates, but her calculation was incorrect. Um, when I took the dates and calculated it, it was way off in terms of a number of days. Um, and she would have perhaps counted uh, the bloods that she's seeing now and spotting now as haze, whereas it actually falls within the Tuhar period and it's actually counted as istihada. So she would have stopped reading her salahs and thinking it's haze, whereas it's actually istihada. So 
the real time you see the difference is in terms of numbers. That is why we are showing you both. One, in terms of the calendar to understand the example and two, in terms of the number to actually use on a day-to-day -day basis. So if, look, in terms of the lunar calendar, the numbers can change. Sometimes it's 29, sometimes it's 30, sometimes it's 31. It can always change. That is why you have to use numbers. The numbers tell you exactly where you stand in terms of haze and uh, istihada. This method of calculating, is it the only way of calculating these haze laws? Meaning that the way we learned it previously according to Beshti Zewar, can we say it is wrong? If it is not wrong and also valid but a weaker view, would it be permissible to follow that view since many of the older muftis and apas follow that view, basically are there two valid views? As for some people, it would be better to follow the easier view. Otherwise, it could create doubts and anxiety in them if they can't understand the more complicated view. Many young girls struggle to understand the basic rules. Introducing these complicated rules could mean we lose them. Even worse, they could question why deen is so hard. And it could endanger the Iman and uh, because of waswasa. Wouldn't it be better to teach them the simpler way? See, this is not a matter of uh, what uh, was taught to us uh, by uh, others. This is a matter of what is authentic and what isn't authentic. If a teacher taught me something that was not authentic or not as valid, should I now say, you know what, I'm still going to follow my teacher because that's the old way of doing things. Uh, that's not the way the deen is and that's not the way the shariat is. If uh, I'd learned something incorrect uh, a few years ago or some time ago and I'm hearing um, and listening to the correct view, the authentic view, should I say, you know what, no, no, I learned this in madrasa and I'm going to continue with that. Or are you going to follow what is authentic? Because remember, this is a serious issue. It's in regards to your ibadat. It's in regards to your salahs. It's in regards to your psalm, your fasting. Ask yourself the question, uh, do you want to uh, follow rules that are authentic or lesser than the authentic view? Do you want to follow rules that uh, do not are not as strong uh, in terms of uh, the rules of hayz and istihada and follow something that is weak? Whereas this has to do with your akhirat. Do you want to put all that in, in jeopardy? So that's a question you need to ask yourself or uh, this is the type of question that we need to ask ourselves and then with tact and wisdom uh, teach this uh, to the students. So explain it to them that uh, this is in uh, the correct way of doing it if they learned it incorrectly and this is how it should be uh, taught. So the first thing is if you are a teacher, you first have to understand the, these rules properly. You cannot go to them and teach them some rules that you haven't fully absorbed and understand. So firstly, try to understand it yourself. I've heard of some appas that uh, are stressed out in terms of these masail and rules because firstly, they don't understand it themselves. So if they don't understand it, how are they going to teach it to others? That is why these classes are taking place and will be available online to everyone to refer back to. So firstly, do not rush in this process. Do not now go to everyone and say, you know what, whatever you're doing so far, everything is wrong. Don't do those things. Relax. Take time to absorb and understand these rules. And once you fully understand them, then you start teaching it to them. Do not jump into it when you haven't fully understood it. So let's look at this example in terms of numbers 55T, 5B, 54T, and 14B. So now she always spots after 55B, but she's now spotting after 54T one day earlier. And then you got a situation of excess blood because it's 14 days. What do you do? You look at place, hab place of habit indefinitely in terms of number. You take the number here and you calculate it. Definitely you can uh, find a place of habit. So you got firstly excess blood, you got place of habit, and uh, you also got a nisab in the place of habit. What do you do? You count everything in the place of habit as haze. So uh, the first five days, that is the actual place of habit, will be counted as haze and the rest as, as istihada. So day 55 in which he had early blood, that will actually be counted as istihada. Coming to the tuhar habit, do we say it has changed from 55 
to 44, the answer is no. Why? Because you got invalid blood attached to it that one day is tihada. So it's now 5B and 55T. That's the habit. Let's look at examples where the nisab is not equivalent to the habitual number of days in the place of habit. And this is where you see the difference. So the example is a habitual woman spots for five days and is clean for 55 days. In the following one, she spots for five days in the place of habit. Then she is clean for 57 days. Then she spots for three days. Then she is clean till day 14. Then she spots for one day before a full 15 days has passed. Let's look at the calendar. First five days she spots. She's usually clean for 55 days. Now she is clean for 57 days, two days extra. So, you know, when you've got a two days extra situation in a Tuhar case, the place of habit uh, will be affected and could change and shift, right? Then she spots for three days. So day three, day four, and day five of the third calendar month, she spots there, right? So normally we'll count that as haze, uh, right? And carry on and say, you know what? She's not spotting anything further. Her haze habit has uh, changed uh, from five to actually three. But then she is clean uh, right until uh, day 15, before a full 15 days has passed. So now remember, you have to always keep in mind a Tohre situation, uh, a deficient purity situation. So before a full 15 days has passed, she spots there. As you can see on day 17 of the calendar month. And this is actually before a full 15 days of Tohre uh, or before a full tuhar has passed. So what happens now? you got a situation of continuous flow of blood, legal flow of blood. And everything is now counted and combined and joined together. So when you do that, you got blood in excess of 10 days. When you got blood in excess of 10 days, the first rule is look at the place of habit. Now we're looking at the place of habit. There's definitely bloods there. And these bloods are equivalent to the nisab threshold of three days. So the rule is count everything in the place of habit as hayz and the rest of as istihada. Day 3, 4 and 5 remain uh, uh, days uh, of hayz, right? Um, and uh, the rest that blood on day 17 or before a full 15 days has passed is actually counted as istihada. So effectively, what has happened? Effectively, uh, the number uh, in terms of hayz has reduced from 5 to 3. And the place of habit hasn't uh, changed but has shifted. You can, you can use either term, uh, but uh, it's actually, uh, you know, reduced in number and it's shifted uh, from, you know, day one to now day three. So this is where you see the difference where the, uh, the nisab is not equivalent uh, to the previous number and this is where the real change happens. So the result is the blood has exceeded 10 days and a nisab of a minimum of 3 days exists in the place of habit. The habitual number of hayes changes reduces to 3 days in the place of habit. Uh, the blood in excess of a habit uh, before 15 days has passed on day 72 of the tuhar is istihada. Right? Let's look at it in terms of number 55T, 5B, 57T and 14B. 57T already tells us that there's late bloods. It already tells us that there is a potential uh, shift in terms of the place of habit. Then we've got the 14B, blood in excess of 10 days. What happens there? First thing you do, look at place of habit. Usually she spots after 55 days to her. Now she's spotting after 15, 57 days. So obviously you've got three days thereafter. There's definitely a place of habit, 58, 59 and 60 uh, so you'll count all those days uh, within the place of habit as hayes. So it has now changed from 5B to 3B. In terms of the rest of the bloods, it will be counted as istihada. Question is, does the tohar change or not from 55 to 57? The answer is yes. Why? Because the bloods, even though we've got an invalid uh, blood situation of 14 days, the invalid blood is not at the start, it's at the end. The valid blood is actually at the start. So this 57 has appeared uh, uh, between, uh, has not mixed with any invalid blood and has appeared between two valid bloods. It has changed to 57T. Habit is 3B and 57T. Okay. Here there's quite a few examples where the blood uh, does not exceed 10 days and how the habit change changes. We'll stop here today. There's about uh, seven examples that come here. 
so the time is up and we'll stop the class here. If there's any further questions, we can take them now in the next five minutes. All right, I think this brings us to the end of the class. Jazakumullahu khaira, subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, nashadu an la ilaha illa anta, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayki.